welcome to St. Hilary. We're so glad you're here. Please stand for the first song and sing along. Jesus Christ is risen today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Well, good morning and happy Easter again. We are still in the octave of Easter, which means that it is again Easter Sunday today. Welcome. Happy Easter. It's also known as Divine Mercy Sunday because today we remember and celebrate and thank God for the great mercy that Jesus has on us and his forgiveness in our lives that he showed on the cross. And so we begin our Mass today by turning to his mercy and forgiveness, humbly confessing our sins, but knowing that he is ready to lift us up to new life. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Hey kids, it's time for Jesus Jam, where we'll learn about God's great love for us with high energy games, songs, and more. Just follow the leader with the colorful flag and we'll head next door to Tarantino Hall. Parents, we'll be back before Holy Communion. Let's go! A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that, the love, that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God this, is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith, 
who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The Word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hand, hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Now, Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. And bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We live in an anxious world, don't we? Every day presents many opportunities for us to be worried and upset. The phone rings, it's the school, your child is sick or in trouble. (laughs) The coworker texts, your boss is upset with something you've done or not done. An email comes in, a good friend has died. The mail arrives, you've been summoned for jury duty. The newspaper is dropped off. There's yet another violent conflict erupting somewhere in the world. The app on your phone pings. The stock market is taking a nosedive and your investment is at risk. 
There is no shortage of events in your life and in mine that can rob us of our sense of peace. You may dream of that day when you're caught up with everything you have to do and can finally feel at peace, or that morning when you finally wake up feeling fully refreshed and not worried about the day ahead, or that time when you can finally take that vacation and not be anxious about what's going on back home. But as we said last week, that day, that morning, that time may never come. The only way to try find true and lasting peace in this world is in the midst of the messiness and madness of everyday life. One reason a lot of people don't feel at peace is because they don't like what they see on the inside. They focus too much on their flaws. They don't realize how loved and highly favored they are by God. So today I want to talk with you about making peace with yourself. Some people go around feeling wrong on the inside. Sometimes that's because they've made mistakes in the past. But the guilt and shame just won't go away. They keep thinking about their worst moments. They keep ruminating over things they did years ago. They want to forget, but the enemy keeps reminding them. It keeps coming up in their mind. And that robs them of the ability to have the life of peace and freedom that God wants for them. Other people just don't like themselves very much. They don't like what they see in the mirror. They're fixated on their flaws and overanalyze their shortcomings. They're not at peace because they are at war with themselves. Every year I help uh, lead a retreat, a workshop for couples who are struggling in their marriages. It's called Retrovi. It's a wonderful thing. It's a Catholic ministry. If you know anyone who's struggling in their marriage, I highly recommend it. Retrovi. Anyway, during this workshop or this retreat, at one point we ask everyone there to take out a piece of paper and write down a list of their best qualities. We give them a certain amount of time to do that. Then we ask them to turn the paper over and write a list of their worst qualities. We give them the same amount of time to do that. Guess which list is always longer? You guessed it. The results are always the same. The list of weaknesses is far longer than the list of strengths. It's far longer than the list of strengths. God, whatever that thing is going on in your head, having those thoughts, you know, that we all have from time to time, some more than others, you know, that I'm never going to get ahead, I'm never going to accomplish my dreams, I'm never going to lose that weight and look good, I'm never going to regain my health, I'm never going to break that addiction, my marriage is never going to be okay again, I don't have a purpose anymore in life, all those things that we tend to sometimes say to ourselves, that's not what God wants for us. In the Bible, God says, my grace is sufficient for you. In my power is made perfect in your weakness. We all have weaknesses. We all have areas that we need to improve upon. But going around feeling down about ourselves, that's exactly what God does not want us to do. You are not a finished product. You are a work in progress. God wants you to make peace with yourself and trust in his favor for you because he is at work in you. He is at work in you. Scripture says, God who began a good work in you will carry it through to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. After Jesus was crucified, his disciples went into hiding out of fear of the future, and for good reason. Their, f their leader was dead. Their friend had, was gone. The soldiers had acted with uncommon cruelty. And then the tomb was found empty. The Romans were furious. The chief priests tried to cover it up. The city blew up with rumors and confusion. Anyone associated with Jesus was at risk of being arrested and crucified themselves. But even worse than that, 
The disciples knew that they had abandoned Jesus. They knew that they had walked away from him at his worst moment in his time of greatest need. They all deserted him. In fact, I'm sure that Peter, James, and John remembered that Jesus had begged them to stay awake with him as he prayed in agony in the garden, but they kept falling asleep. I'm sure that Peter bitterly regretted denying Jesus not once, not twice, but three times. That's something you can't walk back from on your own. You can't walk it back on your own. What's done is done. I can only imagine how they felt. And you know, even before Jesus died, the disciples often didn't get it right. They often got it wrong. They were slow learners. Jesus had to keep reminding them of his teachings. He kept having to explain his parables over and over again. He had to keep repeating himself. One time he was trying to impress upon them the importance of serving others. Guess what the disciples did? They got into an argument about which one of them was the greatest. Another time they were in the boat. It was being tossed by a bad storm. Jesus was asleep in the boat, but the disciples still cried out in fear. They didn't trust him to calm the waves and to save them. Another time Jesus had given them the power to go out and heal people. But they could not even cure a young boy with a simple illness because they lacked faith. Looking back on all this, I can only imagine that the disciples, looking back on their faults and failures, must have felt pretty down about themselves. No wonder they were hiding behind locked doors. No wonder they didn't have peace. But then Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. He showed them the wounds in his hands and in his feet and in his side so that they would know how much he loves and forgives them so that they would know his love and his mercy. In fact, Jesus has those scars even today. He will have those wounds for all eternity on his body. They are testimony, evidence to us of his unbounding love for us. A few weeks ago, a woman came up to me after Mass. She told me that for a good part of her life, she had suffered from a great deal of guilt and shame. She was not at peace with herself. But then one day, in words that she could not fully articulate, she had an experience. For whatever reason, she suddenly experienced God's forgiveness and mercy all that love and acceptance and favor came raining down upon her. And she knew she had been forgiven. She knew she was made right in God's eyes. And she was at peace. She was at peace with herself. You too, all of us, we can be at peace with ourselves when we come to fully understand and recognize in the depths of our soul that we are loved, we are highly favored, we are deserving because God has made us deserving of his love. Whatever that negative self-talk is going on inside your head or mine, it's time to turn that off. It's time to turn that off. You are not less than others. You are not a hopeless case. You are not a lost cause. You are a beloved, precious child of God. Sure, I'm sure there's areas that you could work on and improve in, me too, but God is at work in you. He's at work in you every day. A few years ago, I decided to take up golf. I tried playing golf, and I emphasize the word tried because it wasn't easy. I was frustrated most of the time, and after a few years of that, I gave up. I said, why am I spending my day off being frustrated and cursing on the golf course? <laughs> Not really, I never cuss. Anyway, every time I swung the club, I either missed the ball, bounced it into the rough, or hit it into a sand trap. In his mercy, 
my golf partner, Wayne, who was 80 years old at the time and uh, could out walk me on the golf course. <laughs> I could barely keep up with him. In his mercy, Wayne would often let me take a mulligan. In other words, he was saying I could try again. Now, as I understand it, you're not really supposed to take a mulligan. That's not really fair in the game. So um, he would look away, you know, pretend not to notice while I took another shot. He was offering me a do-over, an opportunity to try again. This is what God does for us every single day. He gives us the opportunity to try again, over and over again. In fact, God is at work in you every day, making you more and more into his image. He doesn't want you being unhappy with yourself just because there may be some areas that you need to improve on, some things you need to work on. He doesn't want you beating yourself up all the time. In fact, obsessing over those areas you need to improve in can actually have the opposite effect. It can prevent God's grace and favor from working in you. Don't go around all day with your faults and failures in the forefront of your minds. Sure, there's areas you need to work on. Me too. Maybe you, uh, maybe you get upset easily, you know, and you struggle with anger. Or maybe you tend to judge people and you don't know why you keep doing that. Or maybe you're, you have, find it difficult to forgive people. You know, you tend to hold on to grudges. Or maybe you frequently feel jealous or envious of other people. The list could go on and on. But the problem with that, the problem with keeping an inventory of your imperfections is that it can easily spill over into other relationships. People who are not happy with themselves tend to project negative qualities like criticism, bitterness, anger, arrogance, inferiority, uh, uh, and, and insecurity, all of those things. And plus, you're not going to be able to help God with what he wants you to do if you stay in a place of, of self-doubt and even self-loathing. You're not going to be able to help God. Many of the heroes in the Bible who went on to do great things did not at first believe they were worthy of the task. When God asked Moses to free his people, the ancient Israelites, from slavery in Egypt, his first response was, who am I to do something like that? He didn't think he was up to the task. He didn't think that he was up, that he could fulfill the expectations. When the angel of the Lord came to a, a man named Gideon and told him he wanted him to start an army and lead an army against a nation, uh, a foreign nation who was bullying the Israelites. Gideon said that his family was the poorest in the land and he was the most insignificant in his family. The angel promised that the Lord would stay close to him through it all. When Isaiah saw a vision of God in heaven, wondering whom he could send to be his prophet, Isaiah cried out, I am a man of unclean lips. In other words, he felt that he was too sinful to be God's representative. But God fixed that. He purified Isaiah's lips. When God appointed Jeremiah to be a prophet, he was only 14 or 15 years old. Jeremiah said, I'm too young. I don't know what I'm talking about. God sent him anyway. After Jesus showed his disciples his wounds, he said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I sent you. Despite the fact that they had all abandoned him and fled in his hour of greatest need, despite their numerous imperfections and faults and failures, despite their many setbacks and mistakes in the gospel, Jesus chose his disciples and sent them out to do his work because he poured out his love and grace and favor upon them. Jesus wants to do the same with you, to send you out, but he can't do that if we remain in a state of self-doubt. You have to believe that you are worthy, you are deserving, you are chosen. In fact, you are highly favored because even with all of your imperfections and mine, 
we are sent out. We are sent out like Moses, like Isaiah, like Gideon, like Jeremiah, like the disciples to do great work for God. Great work for God doesn't mean it's a big thing. It can be a big thing. It can also be a little thing. Whatever you do for God is a great thing. Until you have peace with yourself, you will never know how loved and highly favored you really are. But when you finally find peace with yourself, then you will know true and lasting peace in this world. Whatever else happens around you, you will have peace if you have peace with yourself. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We lift up our needs in prayer to the God who gives us true and lasting peace. For the church, that the community of believers around the world will be of one heart and mind. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world, that nations at war and people in conflict will settle their differences and seek the peace that comes from Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who follow Christ, that they will act with the same level of generosity toward the church and the poor as the first Christians. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for people everywhere, that all who doubt and struggle with faith will one day declare that Jesus Christ is truly Lord and God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the poor, and all in distress, that they will receive the healing and new life that comes from the kind of faith which conquers the world in victory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that their sins will be forgiven by Jesus and they will have life in his name forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Katie Simpson, for whom this Mass is being celebrated, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear these, our prayers, O God. And in your kindness, grant us peace in our world, in our families, and in our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. There is a second collection today for our local conference of the St. Vincent de Paul Society, who takes care of the local poor right here in Tiburon and Strawberry. When they come to us requesting financial assistance, our team goes out to their homes, interviews them, and if appropriate, offers limited assistance to help them stay in their homes. There are specially marked envelopes in your pews. If you wish to contribute, we thank you for your generosity.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord, but in this on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
confidence that our sins have been forgiven through the mercy of Christ. We pray in the words that he taught us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the King. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, just a quick reminder about this is the last week if you want to sign up for our spring semester of small groups. Uh, we've got so many people in groups, and we, if you've never done it, we'd love for you to try it out. It is the last week you can do it. It's not too late. So you can either scan that QR code, or you can just call the office, or you can get on our website, go to the small groups section of our next steps 
small groups page of our next steps uh, section, or uh, there's also a QR code, I think, in the bulletin, and there's lots of ways, and we'll be sending out emails as well. So we'd love for you to, to be part of that. Uh, that'll take us through June 2nd, uh, and then uh, we'll be into summer. Another thing I was thinking about, you know, I mentioned in the homily that every day God is working in you to make you more and more into his image and likeness. And I just was thinking about this as our school principal was helping me um, serve communion today, that that's what they do at our school every single day, is they, they are a vehicle for God's grace to work in our children so that they become more and more like God every single day. And uh, so if you ever have any questions about our school, we have a wonderful school here. If your child is turning school age, talk to our principal, Marie. Where are you, Marie? Uh, she's kind of on the short side. Where are you, Marie? Are you still here? Did you leave early? Where? Oh, back there, back there in that corner. If you just have any questions about our school or whatever, we'd love for you to do that. It's just an idea that popped into my brain. Well, have a wonderful day today. We have hospi hospitality next door, I believe, and enjoy this beautiful weather. We love you very much, and we'll see you next week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ is risen today. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a blessed day.